Is this thing on? Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Like it or not, this sentence will change everything for you towards what you think about me. It's either going to make you hate me or love me or remain indifferent to me. Toxic masculinity sells. It does whether you like it or not. It's always sold since the beginning of Hollywood. It's sold from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and early noughties until Hollywood went nuts. Now they want to be progressive. They want to forget about Martin Riggs and John McClane and the old James Bond. They want progressive characters, progressive men, progressive women, and they want to tick every box they can. That doesn't put butts on seats. No one really, no matter what people say publicly, no one wants to see a nice beta male as a hero. It's boring. Why is Mel Gibson's Martin Riggs in the first Lethal Weapon, weapon film so accessible? Because he's fucking flawed. This guy lost his wife in a car accident, right? And he hasn't gotten over it. So he's suicidal. When he's doing a job, as a policeman, he's doing things so he can die. And everyone thinks he's after the suicide pension. He's after the pension. But he actually wants to die. And actually, that's very, very, that's actually very progressive for now. When we talk about suicidal people and depression, that's the thing we're talking about right now. So this guy, right, it is, he is an alpha male, right? But he's also on the edge. He wants to die because he's lost everything that he loved in his life. But even more progressive about this film, which is quite kind of funny because, you know, the SJWs probably perceived this film to be wrong. We find a black policeman who's very close to retirement and his family putting this white alpha male, you know, in his late twenties, early thirties, who's suicidal, who's a bit aggressive and raw. They put him in their bosom of their family. And he becomes a part of their family. This white man. That's the most progressive fucking thing I've ever seen. And it comes from the late 80s, everyone. When they tell us we weren't progressive. They think they're so progressive in the industry now. That is as progressive as hell. But guess what? It was still damn entertaining. And these characters were so relatable and accessible. From Murtaugh and Riggs to Murtaugh's children and wife. And then Joe Pesci coming into the second and third and fourth movie. And other characters. It worked. But it was progressive as well. But ultimately, toxic masculinity does sell. And alpha males do sell. And it's against their religion now. Those men are bad to them. An alpha male is bad. And it's all the same that... You know, they're all misogynists, right? And we shouldn't celebrate these characters and we shouldn't teach young men to look up to those characters. As I've said many times, alpha males and toxic masculinity won World War II. You see, this era, you know, of softly, softly, nicely, nicely, doesn't win any wars. It doesn't keep, it doesn't actually get you to survive on this rock. The other day I was watching Spider-Man No Way Home again on my telly and uh, I saw that bit when all the Spider-Men are kind of huddled together and I was thinking to myself yeah that's nice and everything but what kind of message is this putting out there yeah it's compassionate it's beautiful I get it right and then you've got Andrew Garfield Spider-Man saying how he's not worthy and he's not good and you, you need and then you get Tobey Maguire Spider-Man saying don't say that you're amazing and I'm thinking, like, is this fave trying to comment that this guy's movies didn't do too well? So we got, you know, it was just weird. And I think this is the thing now. We've gone down a different tunnel. Now, Spider-Man No Way Home is nearly made to 200 million. But it's because those Spider-Men are in it. Not because there's beta male spider -Man. You, you, you need to understand this. So James Bond is a fine example of what they're doing now. They want more progressive versions of these characters. So this is why James Bond left his original continuity. Daniel Craig came in, who is a huge progressive, 
said, let's get away from that because he was a misogynist. He treated women badly. He drank, blah, blah, blah. We can't have men who drink. We can't have men who smoke. We can't have men who find women attractive because that, apparently that's subjectifying women. No, you're wrong. Listen, this is the way it works. The reason we identify with John McClane, Martin Riggs and James Bond and other characters of these types and Rambo and Commando is because they're ordinary, flawed, everyday men. Who do you think goes to the cinema? I know women and girls go to the cinema. I'm not trying to say they don't. But mostly it's men around 15 to 40, maybe even 50, who go to cinemas in the majority. After Brie Larson's attacks on white men in their 30s and 40s and 50s, guess who supported her movie and made it go to a billion dollars at the box office? Well, it wasn't women. There were some women, but mostly it was men. Again, from 15 to 50. How ironic. Even though they knew they weren't going to like the movie, it was another chapter in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so they went and supported it. That's the age group who loved the MCU, by the way. Facts. But with James Bond, you see, his toxic traits are the things that sell the character the most. His toxic masculinity, his sarcastic comments, the way he looks at a woman and he does objectify her. And that's OK. He's flawed. I'm not celebrating that. I'm not saying that's a good thing, because like we've never done that ourselves before. Right. Even the progressive guys. What, the straight progressive guys, when they see a woman in a bikini, they're thinking, oh, yeah, what I would do to that. Wouldn't mind some of that. You're not going to admit it, but you do. We all do. It's not right, but we do it, right? Because it's natural. It's part of our biology. And as long as we're not going up to them and bothering them and we're not blatantly looking at them and making them feel uncomfortable, I think it's OK. James Bond, in his originality in movies, is great. Because James Bond doesn't apologise. He knows he's flawed. He's a secret agent. He's the best secret agent in the world. He can do, he can accomplish the mission. He uses women. He uses men. He uses everyone, right? To his advantage. And most of these people along the way are going to fucking die. James Bond isn't necessarily a nice bloke, but he's still a hero. Good people can do bad things and act in bad ways. And as long as they can evolve through those things, that's the most important thing. So what Daniel Craig and Barbara Broccoli tried to do was take James Bond away from that. So in Casino Royale, they kind of didn't dumb him down and beta male him and progress him up too much because they knew it would be too blatant. They needed to suck us in in the first movie. And I mean, Casino Royale. Casino Royale is like this most amazing contemporary Bond movie. I don't think the film's flawed at all. But then you start to see it in Quantum of Solace, etc., etc. Even Skyfall, which everyone celebrates, is a ripoff of The Dark Knight. You may not see it, but go back. The mansion, the, you know, the butler, the old butler and all that. It's all there. And the villain, if you, even if you look at the villa, villain, villa, villa, villain, right? He's fucking the Joker. He's the Joker. No, he's not fucking the Joker. He's the Joker, right? It's a ripoff. So the only good Daniel Craig movie that I love is Casino Royale. Because it may be outside of that continuity, but he's still James Bond. A contemporary James Bond. He's macho, he's alpha male, and he's a toxic male. And that's fucking great, because that puts butts in seats. But Daniel Craig doesn't like that. Daniel Craig doesn't approve of that. And everything that Daniel Craig goes, wanted, goes, right? So it happened. Guess what? With the help of Daniel Craig, Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson destroyed James Bond. No Time to Die isn't a compelling movie. It's a near three hour movie that runs and runs and runs with great cinematography. I'll give them that and action and great music by Hans Zimmer. But it isn't a good film. The villain is shit and he's played by one of the best actors of this generation. And they made a shit villain. Like the bit when he lets the little girl just go, right? Pathetic. The film is pathetic. As are most of them, apart from Casino Royale. Casino Royale changed what the Bond girl was. She wasn't just going to be the bimbo holding Bond's hand. She mattered. She was a character, a strong woman in her own right. That's who Vespa Lynn was. 
Wow. And her death was supposed to energize the new arc of the character. I get it. And it was all supposed to continue off each film. I get it. A good idea. They just didn't execute it very well. I celebrate Vespa Lynn for being a contemporary female in a James Bond movie and a strong one at that. But ultimately, after that Casino Royale film, they lost the plot. They made mistake after mistake after mistake, never admitted to those mistakes. So what do they do now? Well, we know what they were saying before, No Time to Die, about misogynism, Bond, you know, being a toxic male, blah, blah, blah. And talking about wanting to take him away from that. That's who James Bond is. He is a misogynist. He is a dinosaur. And if you take that away from James Bond, he's not accessible to audiences anymore. So whatever happens next is massive for this franchise. I think they'll kill it dead eventually. I mean, this is a very bad film, No Time to Die, but he made a hell of a lot of money because it was the last one. And, you know, we saw the trailers and it looked exciting and people still celebrated Daniel Craig as James Bond. I don't, apart from Casino Royale. I think it's one of the worst eras. And you look at Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson. They fucked up with the help of Daniel Craig, the Craig era, and they fucked up the Brosnan era after Goldeneye. So they're, they're consistent in being inconsistent and making bad Bond movies, but they've proven they can make great contemporary Bond movies, both with Goldeneye and more, more so Casino Royale. So they're only going to do it when they feel like it, right? So in the first film of this new era, it'll be great again. And when they suck this all in, they're going to do their bullshit again. It's no good. James Bond needs new leadership, but unfortunately, Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson are tied in to this company, E.ON. And I know Amazon are involved now with MGM, but I don't know how many what their rights are to Bond. Or if Broccoli and Wilson still have full say and nearly full ownership. I don't get it. But they are yesterday, Michael G. Wilson and Barbara Broccoli. They're not living in today. They're not willing to modernise. Casino Royale was a great modernisation, a contemporary style. Uh, con sorry, get my words out. A contemporary story for James Bond. So from that, we went to the other films. And only you, you don't know, I don't know. Only they know what they were playing at. But they're still making money. See, until James Bond flops, they're going to keep on doing this. So, ultimately, toxic masculinity sells. But Hollywood have decided to go the other way and be progressive. Progressive storytelling will never sell. Now and again, but mostly, it won't sell. We will slowly go down this hill of having beta males and progressive males and strong female leads, one day they'll wake up and they'll realise they're not making any money. They set up these huge streaming services. But if people ain't watching your content, what's the point? There will become a time when people will just have home media, physical media, and not watch the older, more superior stuff. That's what's keeping streaming services afloat. It isn't the new contemporary stuff, it's the old stuff we used to watch as kids. That's why they're winning. We can choose to buy physical media and just watch it at home and destroy these fuckers because these people don't like us. They don't. These people do not like us. They hate their audience. They hate straight men. And they're not making movies for us. They want young men to look at being a male in a different way. But you can't reprogram what's already there. Straight men are straight men. What it is with straight men as well, when, when we're, it's, like, it's like that woman at work who will tell you, I'm a strong woman, I don't need no man. And then there's something on the top shelf she asks you to get. Or when it's time to empty the bins, the heavy bins, or pick up a heavy box, she'll want your help. I'm not just saying this to be facetious. These are the facts of fucking life, right? We're handy in certain instances. If World War Three happens, right, they'll send us. Do you imagine these contemporary strong women? Why don't we, the men, stay at home while they go to war? Yeah, that proves it, that they're strong and we're not. 
Why don't that happen? Nah, they're not going to do that. Only when it suits the progressives are they progressive. So they've got their claws. They've got a stranglehold on the entertainment industry. And they're going to teach us straight, toxic white men. Yeah. But they're not going to teach us. They're just going to bankrupt themselves, which they're doing right now. Toxic masculinity sells. Alpha males sell. You may not want to believe that, but those are the hard facts. This has been Movies TV Mad. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again when I'm live tonight. Until then, goodbye. Au revoir. I'll feel the same.